How's it, chaps, and welcome back to the Burton Builds Garage. In this episode, we are going to have a look at one of the potential issues with the Zoom F6 field recorder and how we can solve it. So let's get started. So chaps, uh, just before we get into talking about uh, the slight issue that uh, I think a lot of us have experienced with the Zoom F6, uh, just to cover the equipment that I'm using, I'm currently talking into a and recording the video with a Sony A6400 and uh, using a Zoom F6 field recorder and the Rode NTG5 microphone that is plugged into the channel one of the Zoom F6 field recorder. And, uh, and that's the audio that you're listening to at the moment. And it sounds pretty clean. Oh, well, at least I would hope so. Uh, there's, there's not very much background noise. Also, what I'm doing is I'm recording scratch audio into the camera. So if you have a close look here, I'm uh, actually feeding from the line output of the Zoom F6, and I'm feeding that into the camera. And that's into the camera's microphone input. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have experienced this before. When you do that, you you kind of get this really high noise floor or this prominent hiss on the audio track. Uh, and there's good reason for that. And that's because we are trying to feed a line level signal into a microphone level input. So generally what we'll do is we'll come into the line level output and you can see mine is actually set at zero dB. Um, well, hang on, there's a bit of a reflection there. So you can see mine is set to zero dB. Now, normally we would have to set this to like maybe negative 20, negative 30, negative 40 dB, just to send out a, a soft or a weak enough signal that our camera can actually uh, handle that signal without distorting. So how am I doing this now, sending it into the camera and still having the line out value at zero dB? Well, that's using an attenuator box or an attenuator cable. Now, this wasn't my idea at all. This was um, something that Curtis Judd brought up about four weeks ago. And uh, it's quite simple. I don't know why I didn't think of this before. I mean, I've you know I've dealt with a lot of stage sound before, and you know sometimes it's just the simple things that uh, that get by. So thanks very much, Curtis Chad. If any of you guys are interested, go go watch his videos. He's far more knowledgeable than what I am. Uh, anything to do with sound and and lighting, video man, that oak is a champion. So. Uh, let's get back to how am I doing this? Well, as I said, through an attenuator box, and he. Um, talked about using an attenuator cable. The attenuator box that I'm using is a hybrid DB-02. Now this is more of a stage box uh, for stage instruments, plugging them into a, into a mixer. Um, it's, it's something that I had around, but this does the same thing as an attenuator cable that you can buy. So you can buy an attenuator cable that is, is a, a male 3.5 millimeter stereo jack plug to male 3.5 millimeter stereo jack plug, and that'll plug directly between your field recorder and your camera. Uh, but I had this lying around, so I just modified it quickly. Normally your instruments would plug in over here. So you've got uh, four jack plug inputs and you've got two balanced line outputs. So I just changed this up, I opened it up and uh, soldered in some cabling. And that's what we are sitting with now. Basically it is an attenuator cable just in a box form. The, the nice thing about this, and you can actually see that on here, um, this thing includes a matching transformer attenuator, basically an audio transformer, which helps with impedance matching between the two devices. Now our Zoom F6 is roughly an impedance of 100 ohms, and most consumer grade cameras like the Sony a6400, at a guess, 600 ohms, most consumer grade stuff is around there. So uh, this transformer in here is gonna help match those impedances. And another benefit of having the transformer is it is it isolates the signal. So if you've got any ground loops or you've had problems with ground loops in the past, this should sort it out. Uh, that is something that your attenuator cables don't really have built into them. Well, not the really cheap ones. Um, you might have to buy a separate a ground loop little cable insert. So that's what we are using now. And uh, it's working pretty damn well. So before... I ended up uh, what you know searching online and, and seeing what Curtis had to say and trying my own DB uh, attenuator well I'm uh, DB uh, my own attenuator box um, setup what I wanted to do um, was just to check was there actually a problem with with my zoom field recorder so I ended up uh, getting a cable this is just a XLR to a stereo mini jack and I plugged the mini jack plug into the line output 
on the Zoom F6 recorder and then this XLR input into channel number three. What that ended up doing was, uh, uh, or what I ended up doing, should I say, is feeding, uh, like I'm doing now with a microphone, feeding a signal into channel number one. That channel number one was routed out and we can actually still see that if we go to the line out and we go to uh, reflection, come on Grant. So if we go to the line out and then we go to the routing, we can see our channel number one uh, is being routed out the line out and no other channels are being routed out there. Uh, and that's on the post fader level. So the recording from the microphone is being routed out of the line out and being re-recorded back into channel three. So uh, what I ended up doing was if we go back here to line output and uh, we look at our level, our level I set the line output to zero dB and then set the channel three to a line level input, made the recording and just to check if there was any background noise and there was absolutely nothing, it is silent. Uh, then if you change or reconfigure the channel three to a microphone level input and then set our line output level to minus 30 dB, straight away we get that background, that prominent hiss or that noise floor, exactly the same as what was going into the camera or what is happening with our microphone level inputs on the cameras. So that just proved to me that there wasn't a problem with the unit and that's why I say there isn't problems with these units, it's just a consumer error. So I'll, uh, well, let's do it now actually, let's switch to some audio samples of the various tracks. So for this part of the test, uh, we've got the line level out being routed directly into channel three on the Zoom F6 here. And uh, if we have a look, our track three, our source is set to line, so that's a line level input. So what we have is the line level output being routed into a line level input, and this is how things should be. We can also go and have a look at the output, uh, line out and level, and we can see our line out level is set to zero dB. And the signal is nice and clear, uh, clean, and there's no there's no background hiss. So if we had to reconfigure now channel three as a microphone level input, uh, so that would be mimicking what your camera would be, uh, then we're going to expect to hear that hiss. Before I actually reconfigure it to a microphone level, I'm going to decrease our line level output. This is what you would be doing on your camera in any case. So if we reconfigure our line level output to minus 20, There we go, minus 20, and now you can hear the signal has actually dropped off substantially. And we go back to track three, source, line, and we reconfigure that to a microphone level. There we go, now we've reconfigured it to a microphone level. So uh, this is as it would be, like mimicking like it would be going into your camera. And we can hear that prominent hiss in the background. So. Uh, this is just proving that there's actually nothing wrong with the Zoom F6 uh, hardware unit. It's just a configuration thing. We're not supposed to be sending a line out level into a microphone level input. So I'm going to just reconfigure this quickly back to line level. And there we go. We are now back to our line level of 0 dB and uh, the channel 3 input is set to a line level input. So what we're actually going to do now uh, in the in the second part of the test is we're going to plug in our DR box. So this is our little DR, uh, uh, you know, attenuator. And we're also going to try our homemade attenuator. Uh, we'll actually just talk about this uh, later on in the video. For this part of the test, we are going to just prove that our attenuator box here, our DR box, or in, in the ca your case, maybe an attenuator cable, that that actually does work. And uh, you're currently listening to channel number one recording. We are very soon going to change over to channel number three. Uh, but as you can see, there is there's actually no signal on channel number three at the moment. But channel number three is on. So if we uh, reconfigure channel number three from a line level uh, input to a microphone level input. There we go. And uh, now we can see that there is a slight uh, signal on channel number three. If we go to the output, line out level, and we can see our line out level is at zero dB. And this is what it sounds like. So we've got a line out of zero dB that is being routed into 
channel 3, which is actually set to a microphone source, but the only difference is that it's being routed through our attenuator box. And you can hear the signal is, is quite nice and clean, not as clean as if it were routing from a line level output to a line level input, but more than usable. So as we can hear, it is definitely a configuration problem. Uh, we, uh, we shouldn't be sending line out signals into a microphone input signal. So uh, specifically now, if you don't want to buy your own or if you're really keen on DIYing a lot of stuff, as I like trying things all the time, you can make one of these yourself. Now, if you just uh, get onto the uh, spider web, now I did that uh, quite a while, a couple of days ago, I spent a lot of hours researching how to make these passive attenuators, and they're basically called passive attenuator pads. It's just a resistor pad, uh, a voltage divider, if you will. And uh, uh, you get a couple of different uh, schematic designs. They, they're very simple. They mostly use three, four, or five different uh, resistors, and they, they're called uh, L-pads or T-pads or H-pads or a PAR-pad. Um, just, a, you know, the names actually come from literally the shape of that the components make. Um, so what I ended up doing, so if we get this other stuff out the way, is let's take that right out the way. Let's get this guy up there. Uh, so... I made this, and this is a little T-pad attenuator. So normally this side would plug into the line output of the zoom, and this side would plug into our camera. Now, this is only a single channel attenuator. Uh, you know, usually we record stereo signals, so you would need to make two of these uh, back to back. So as I said, I've got it coming from the line output uh, from the zoom coming in here, and these two resistors are two 100 ohm resistors. I needed 150 ohm resistor. I didn't have it. So I used two 100 ohm resistors in parallel. And then I, I think this is called a shunt resistor. This one over here, uh, that is a 20 ohm resistor. And if I remember correctly, it's giving us about 15, 10 to 15 dB of attenuation because that's where a voltage drop is happening. And then on the other side here, we have got a 580 ohm resistor. So this roughly matches the impedance. So our camera would be on uh, the right hand side here and that's a 600 ohm resistance of 580 plus 20 and on the zoom side we need 100 ohms or less according to the spec sheet so this is 50 ohms and 20 ohms that is 70 ohms so the impedances match roughly and uh, this cable does work here is an audio sample of it okay so for this part of the test if you actually remember back to the previous test when we used our attenuator box and we had our uh, channel number three we had it configured to mic which is still configured to a mic level input and we had our output level set line out uh, level and we can see the level is at zero db so under normal circumstances with a straight cable uh, plugged into your camera then this would have given you that that high level of uh, hiss or that prominent hiss that we have all been experiencing uh, so having a look now at our hacked little attenuator cable. Um, we can see it's just that simple resistor cable. So our input is the 50 ohm side. So I'm gonna take that, that, that plug and I'm gonna plug it into the line out of our zoom. And then I'm gonna take this side. Um, so this would normally go into your camera now. And I'm gonna plug that into this little uh, doodaddle. And uh, we, we can see that that one goes into channel number three. So uh, our homemade attenuator is now working. Let's try and get it a little bit more in frame there. And uh, if we switch over to channel number three, we can see that we're actually getting an audio signal on that channel number three. And this is what the audio sounds like on channel number three. So we can hear that it is, uh, it's quite a strong signal and there is a little bit of a background hiss, but it's nowhere near as much of a hiss as if we were using a direct cable, although it is a little bit more of a hiss uh, compared to using an actual proper DR box or maybe even a purchased attenuator cable. I suppose that will depend on the quality of cable or the quality of uh, DR or attenuator box that you do purchase, or it could be down to the fact that... Uh, that none of this wiring is screened. As I said, this was only done for like uh, uh, test purposes, for hacking purposes. Uh, maybe in the future I'll uh, I'll make something uh, make something of it. Uh, we'll just see what happens.
as we can uh, see the cable definitely does work now it's really really hacked together please do not make cables like this i just did it for illustrative purposes um, if you are going to make your own cable please use screen cabling uh, you can use much smaller resistors i think these are quarter watt resistors uh, you can use you can use smaller ones than that it's not a problem and uh, as i said you would this is only a single channel you would have to make a, a dual channel sort of set up for a for, for stereo channels uh, really simple to make uh, also please do this at your own risk uh, you know I've, I've literally plugged it into my zoom f6 i've plugged it into my camera um, it's not going to damage anything uh, as long as you <laughs> as long as you've done it correctly so please do it at your own risk uh, but that said uh, i'll probably use it at some stage not not in this form but i will definitely use it at some stage um, you know make it into a cable type of setup uh, you know so that i don't have to use my dr box and uh yeah you know i don't, I don't know well i'll play around with it some more and if i if i find out any more maybe i'll make another video about it <laughs> so uh guys you know thanks for watching uh, leave me some comments in the comment section below if you've got anything to say now i'm not an audio engineer i'm not a circuit electronics engineer a designer by any means i just searched on the internet so maybe this is actually wrong um you know you know maybe there's a better way of doing it let us know in the comments and uh you know maybe it helps somebody else out if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you didn't like it well i suppose give it a thumbs down then and uh you know if you haven't subscribed please subscribe to my channel it really does help me out to all of you all of my subscribers that that always watch my videos man thanks very much for all the support it really means a lot to me Chaps, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it wasn't too long. I'm sorry, it's probably around about 20, 25 minutes already, maybe a little bit shorter. Uh, but I guess all that is left to say is that we'll see you next time. Cheers.